Mark's Andy. Hi, it's Dave. Hi, it's Kirk. Welcome to the ADK Rock and Metal channel, and today we're doing a random discussion generated by our random discussion generator. Uh, if one of the discussion topics we have already done before, if you hit on a black screen, we will press, press the, the button again. Uh, the button. Again. <laughs> and, uh, do a different one. The button. The button. I can speak French. Can you not tell? Um, so uh, let's, let's get to it. This is Kirk's topic. Why is modern metalcore so enamoured with new metal, even though the former replaced the latter in 2004? I think Andy should know. <laughs> Andy, should be there. Andy, you first. Uh, so here's a context here. So ex- you need to explain this one because I actually disagree with it. Okay. But uh, this this so just summarise. So summarise why you, why you, why you put this topic forward. See, for me, metalcore replaced new metal as the dominant genre in mainstream metal and it helped to bring back thrash because you had high tempos they completely eliminated hip-hop and rap that new metal had they started playing extravagant guitar solos and then obviously they brought in hardcore and combined that with even some some classic heavy metal in some cases like iron maiden so it, you couldn't get such a contrast so in 2004 you know kill switch engage I won't call Lamb of God a metalcore band, but they came around that new wave of American heavy metal, and it was so exciting, and it finally got rid of the minimalist musicianship of new metal, completely stripped it of all those elements that were alien to the genre. And then now, fast forward to 2024, and we have new metalcore, and a lot of those American metalcore bands are just going back to new metal, a genre that their forefathers in the golden age of metalcore had essentially replaced and rejected. So to me, there's an irony in that. So I disagree with that statement. So you think there's continuity from new metal to metalcore? So just, just as, you know, I'm not gonna add much to this, but modern metalcore bands are now harking back to the the elements that of the likes of Korn. Yeah. And incorporating them. Incorporated into their music now. Yeah, even Code Orange have started doing it and done it quite successfully, to be fair, on their last two albums. So I. But you don't think you don't think these. Well, uh, there's one thing. Do for, I don't think the former replaced the latter in 2004. I think what simply happened was new metal died off because metalcore existed from the mid 90s. It just wasn't the prevalent form of metal at the time, so it wasn't popular. So bands like God Forbid, who were a metalcore band, started in 1996. So they were already around and they were out touring, but the problem was, and their first album came out in 1998, so they were out whilst new metal was still in, in its uh, climate. So we, they were still first wave of new metal was going on. The problem was, was they weren't getting the recognition. Uh, I mean, God forbid, what, 2000s, they were doing the Ozfest tours. So there were metalcore bands, and I think what happened purely was, was that metalcore at the time wanted to keep themselves separate from new metal, so they had a very clear separation. And they were doing their own thing. And then what happened was new metal went out of popularity and metalcore continued because that element stayed. Whereas now new modern metal, metalcore don't feel that uh, that need to separate themselves out from new metal because they can go and incorporate that. Whereas the early metalcore, if they'd started incorporating new metal into their sound, would have then just got blend, blended over with the new metal of the time. And I think that's why. <coughs> so I don't think they ever replaced them. I think they were coexisting, but they were just being be- they were basically being smothered by new metal in the industry at the time. So that early modern early metalcore from the ni- mid nineties to the early two thousands just wasn't as popular, but it existed. And it was only when new metal died its own death at the time that that metalcore was able to breathe, continue. But the reason why we're seeing modern metalcore incorporating new metal in is because they can whereas the original metalcore couldn't because new metal was live and trending and so on. Do you think that's my argument to that? Do you think the, um, so we know should we I think it's really 2003 2004 when new metal died it's probably 2003. Well, uh, uh, was it Crazy Fists? Well it was Crazy Fists and Butterfly. What? When that came out that fucking killed the entire genre. So I think that was 2003. Come my lady come well, come my lady you're so, gonna fly sugar baby. Crazy Fists or Crazy Town? Crazy, crazy, crazy Town. town. Oh, I think 36 crazy, crazy tests. Yeah. yeah. So what, so some crazy tests. Crazy tests. Test. What were they? That's just popped to me. With, they were. They were. The they were look. unfortunately from the new metal era, and so that that literally was the nail yeah, in the coffin. That is that is the moment when new metal went 
fuck, we're dead. Because <laughs> that came out. Unsurprisingly. So, so yeah, something yeah. has to replace this void, and to me, it looked like Metalcore was the next exciting thing. Shadows fall, bands like that, God forbid. But they had all been going on in the background while New Metal had started, so in the late 90s. So what my argument there is, is that, that those bands just couldn't incorporate the New Metal sound into it because they would have then been completely yeah, it because they were trying to be different. Yeah. Where, and they even if they liked New Metal, and a lot of these bands actually liked a lot of the New Metal bands, but they had to keep themselves separate so they weren't pigeonholed as a new metal band. Whereas now, modern metalcore bands, there isn't such a thing as modern new metal to be pigeonholed into. Chaosium is probably only the most, most recent band that's kind of sounding very new metal. So they can. They can take elements of new metal. We've seen it with Dead Flesh. Who, you can hear Chris when he's ring writing mm-hmm. stuff at Dead Flesh. You can hear the new metal influences, but there's no worry about them going oh you sound like a new metal band because there is no such thing as a modern new metal scene so your argument which is quite persuasive thank you is that <laughs> you, you that? disagree with me that metalcore replaced new metal and was a reaction to it that's what you're saying you don't think it was a reaction to new metal and that the that you know once we've stripped out hip-hop and rap and all these elements that a lot of us don't like but that was happening to to alternative metal like new metal in the late 90s and it's kind of like returning to thrash metal and bringing still bringing in a lot to the table isn't it from across the spectrum and then eventually they end up ripping off out because it's a lot of these bands the difference being is metalcore came out a couple of years after new metal so new metal came out around what 93 give or take when corns dropped their album although you could take it back even further (coughs) uh, primus faith no more and some of the earlier bands in the early 90s so that they were that transitional piece and it was more of a new metal was more of a reaction to grunge than anything else, in my opinion. See, yeah, I think it complemented grunge. You know, it was the alternative, so people wanted yeah. to do something with more groove laden, more on the point, more and incorporate R and B and stuff like that. Metalcore also started around that same time, but was never taken as popular because, and it was kind of that was more of your underground scene going on. Mm. It was so, like, and it was f- new. F- and f- as new metal suddenly got all the metal. popularity, metalcore did not get any of the popularity or any of the press because new metal was was the in thing, but it was still there existing, and they. It wasn't that they were hating new metal and now they're liking new metal. And if you listen to a lot of God Forbid, especially God Forbid post the new metal die off, there is new metal elements in God Forbid and stuff. But if you listen to their early albums, it didn't. And that was, yeah. I think, that was a pure intention of the bands to cl- have clear separation so that they weren't incorporated in the new metal. See? Andy, uh, we can actually, I think you'd be interested to know you're on this. No, no, <laughs> is that right? to Andy, you involved me, yeah. Metalcore. <laughs> Am I right in thinking, why, why is Metalcore, modern Metalcore, it is, it does have a younger demographic. I can put on a, yeah. a, a Metalcore and I'll just think, not for me, I'm too old. You know, I listen to the whiny vocals in the chorus, like, fucking hell, how old am I, 14? It just doesn't oh, appeal. How old are you? <laughs> no, it just doesn't, I, I think it finds it hard to, to appeal to anyone outside that 18 to 25 age range and, and new metal got a bit like that was a bit like that wasn't it as well so do you why don't you listen to metalcore is the question when you look at what what puts you off this is one of them throw you under the bus moments that we see. he does <laughs> like if we, if we were to go metalcore and say kill switch engage when we've played kill switch engage you've enjoyed it yeah i've got a couple of albums yeah um but it's just not his k core general I mean, this, this sort of leads me on to a question I, I place. Why don't we like all genres? Why don't I like all genres? Mm. I don't dislike all genres, but I don't... Within metal, you mean? Yeah, yeah. within metal. I, and, but I don't, in, you know, embrace everything that comes our way. Um, it's more like, why don't you like all bands within genres? Yeah. Because that's the problem. Is if you like Doom, and we played you every Doom sort of band out there, you're not going to like every Doom band. Mm, you'd be far wrong, to be honest. Or death band, death metal band. No, again, you wouldn't be too far wrong. This is, 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 is very genre led. You know, if if they're, if they're within the realms of a genre that that I like, then I'm gonna probably like pretty much every band. Mm-hmm. Metalcore. I don't know. Genre for posers. Genre. For no, I think, I think I think it's just a case of teenagers. I think it's just a case of you can't listen to everything with with the with the. Availability of music now, I certainly can't listen to all the bands that I want to listen to, let alone ones that fall inside genres that I don't generally listen to, like metalcore. It's only when we do things like this that 
you know, we'll, we'll do a reaction video that one particular band might, you know, pique my interest and I'll follow it further. You know, um, but I mean, something like Kill Switch Engage, I, I, you know, back in the days of the, the music video channels and you, you saw the likes of um, Rose of Shireen, you know, what, you know, absolutely love that song. Mm. And I've got the album that it's on, but I don't play that album because the whole, you know, what Kill Switch Engage and Metalcore give to me doesn't grab me enough to want to listen to the whole album and get into more bands in that genre. But that particular song, for whatever reason, maybe it's the music video, the fact that it's sort of, you see it visually as well. Yeah. It strikes a chord and it's catchy and there's some great riffs. I mean, there's elements of it that you like, but there's not enough elements for me to, you know, really sink my teeth into the whole genre and, and sort of delve into Kill Switch Engage, Shadowfall, you know, and the bands of that ilk, you know. But it's, I mean, it's... I don't see enough separation between these bands. There's not this... Do you think there's a similarity between the bands in this genre? So, for instance, if I, if I was to listen to some Doom elements of some Doom bands, there is a personality within a band that there'll be something there that uh, I can hook or connect onto. Yeah. Within metalcore, it feels like they're all cut from the same mold. There is no individual personality of those bands. Whereas again, symphonic metal, I can go through lots of symphonic metal bands. So, Epica, not a fan of the band. Uh, Amar uh, Amaranth, not a fan of the band. Delay. Uh, Delay, not a fan of the band. Within Temptation, really enjoy the band. Why? Because there's the personality of the singer's vocal delivery, vocal style, is very different to the others. Nightwish, but only from the Floor Janssen era, some of the Annette stuff, but never a fan of Natasha. Again, vocal delivery performance. Metalcore, all vocalists sound the fucking same to me. They mm. all have the fucking same delivery, which means there's nothing to distinguish them from each other. Well, you said and they have well, formulaic breakdowns. Formulaic, so it's, yeah, it's formulaic, because you said, oh, there's the cliché clean chorus. Yeah, with a breakdown. especially in modern metalcore. Yeah. Yeah. But now they're trying to throw more death elements into a lot of modern metalcore and stuff like that as well. So, And now we have... I, do you know what's getting rid of more modern metalcore is the fact of use of uh, backing samples and stuff like that that's now yeah. starting to fuck me off. I know, I'm, I'm the same. Who are modern metalcore Fall, bands? Like Falling in Reverse, so it's a little not metalcore. Well, I mean, I was Fall listening to the new off. album from Error today, this morning, so they're gent metalcore, but they've got prog elements, so I do enjoy some of them. But what you've just said there is right. Intro to so many songs, okay? Some superfluous window dressing of synths that are not going to play any part of the song after the first 10 seconds. And then a midsection, though. Yeah, like, exactly. We, 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 just, you know, where, where you yeah. get the drum machine, where the, 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 the trip hop beats in the middle. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, come on. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Like, just, just stop it, please. Just yeah, stop. I mean, modern metalcore bands like Polaris, I would say. Okay. Uh, a lot of them are actually just taking Linkin Park. The, the complexity of periphery and then and then even worse like fucking Blink-182 type what you say modern metalcore Silosis wouldn't they fit into that I would say they're thrash Silosis okay. oh maybe yeah there are some breakdowns there's right metalcore, some metalcore elements in there yeah see that's a good mix up there so metalcore mixed with thrash I quite enjoy yeah that's a nice part yeah, exactly. so when they throw it the new metal elements I'm kind of like because you're not seeing modern new, it's like we're not having another wave of new metal. But everyone's watching these new metal bands like Korn and uh, Limp Bizkit and stuff. But it's because they, Fred Durst had that genius move to do dad rock and just play completely that up to that. has made everyone's kind of Limp Bizkit's popular again. But only from a novelty point of view. No one gives a fucking shit about new music from the bands. They just want to see them at the festivals and relive their youth. Of jumping around to Got the Life by Korn and yeah. Nookie from uh, Limp Bizkit and stuff like that. So... I just, as far as this question goes, I just think it was a time and place where the bands needed to have clear separation, which is why now, I don't think they're enamoured with it, they just don't feel, you've got to remember that when these guys, if they're in their 30s and they're a modern metalcore band, they were going to be kids when new metal was finishing the first time round. So it would be their parents who were new metal heads. And so they're listening to what their parents would have had playing when they were kids growing up. So they will know that music from there. And people don't tend to let go of their old music collection stuff that you listened to 20 years ago. You still pretty much listen to now. Mm -hmm. So they would have grown up so, new metal, so I think they would have incorporated that into their playing, these younger bands. Yeah, so, so your answer is, first of all, you don't think that metalcore replaced new no. metal and it was a reaction against it. 
which I think you've argued quite successfully, to be fair. And then the other, I guess what I'm trying to say, is it a betrayal of Metalcore's idea as well? There's a big difference between integrity and bands like that. They're really, you know, they're, they're never going to have gleaming white teeth. Men in their early 20s, you know, who are good looking from the suburbs playing that type of music. I think that's what happens with Metalcore, doesn't it? It becomes safe. You've got these people playing music that's quite heavy and you look at them and you just think, why are you listening to, to our music? You're not a true metaler. I think that is what comes through for me and that's probably what does put me off now. Modern Metalcore, you know, these are bands. Their main influence is fucking Slipknot, not Chromax or any of these hardcore bands. You've never heard any hardcore music, so they need to go back and do the homework. Now, I'm sounding like the grumpy man. But they do. You know, it's like... We'll take it. We're a metalcore like, band. Oh, who's your main influence then? Do you, do you like Chromax? Which is your favourite Chromax album? No, my favourite band is Slipknot. Is that a character from Stranger Things? <laughs> Chromax. <laughs> so, so okay. there's, there's no hardcore in yeah. modern metalcore, is there? No, I think, they, they, again, that's an element of trying to mix in as many different genres as they can nowadays. But anyway, let us know what you think in the comments down below. Now, if you enjoyed our video today, please do like, share and subscribe. And we'll see you on another video sometime very soon. Take care.